Hello, hello, this is Father Adam greeting all of you on this, the first Sunday of Lent, when we have these beautiful readings from uh, the church today that should fill us with great hope. The first reading from the book of Genesis tells us about the flood during the time of Noah, when seemingly only eight people made it on the ark and the rest of the people were lost. Well, the second reading from the first letter of Peter clarifies this because it says that Jesus, after the resurrection, descended to those people who seemingly If we only read the book of Genesis, we would think that they perished, but they didn't because Jesus went after them. He descended into their prison, prison shawl, uh, which is the word in Hebrew that is used for hell, is the place that so many of our family members may find themselves in. Wherever there is no God, wherever there is a lack of hope, wherever there is a lack of love, wherever there is depression and anxiety and worry and fear and thoughts of suicide, wherever you feel like you can't keep going, wherever your problems and sufferings and issues come down on you and bury you, and so many of your loved ones are in that state right now, You may be in that state right now. What does our God do in Jesus Christ? He goes down into that prison. He goes down into that hell to bring us out. And that should fill us with great hope today that there is nobody in the sight of God who is lost. To God, nobody is unredeemable or unsavable. God is the God at least the one that I worship, that doesn't send people to hell. If you believe in a God who would send people to hell, you can have him. Life throws us in hell. Sin throws us in hell. Hell is the absence of God, where there is no joy, no happiness, where there is gloom and darkness, there is no God, where there are, where there is just depression as we find ourselves in, today so much, where there's thoughts of suicide, where there is a sense of despair and darkness. When you look at our political situation and that fills you with great restlessness and it takes away your peace. You look at all the people dying from the pandemic You look at all the people who can't make it, who are dying from hunger, all the violence in the world. And then you look at your own family members and friends who may be lost in drugs or in loose living. And they say that they are atheists, that they don't believe in God or they are agnostics. They don't have faith. And you are filled with despair. How many of you come to me and you are worried about your family members who may have died, even committing suicide. And you say, where did they go, Father? What happened to them? Well, the Bible gives us clear answers that God never rests until he finds each and every one of his children. The book of Genesis today tells us that only eight people made it on the ark. And if you only read the book of Genesis, you would think that everybody else got lost. But the first letter of Peter today clarifies, glory be to God. It clarifies for us the heart of the God that I worship, that I adore, and that I am calling you to worship and adore. Then that God, that God that I worship today in his son, Jesus Christ, goes down after the resurrection into the depths of hell to preach to those people because God does not want any of his children to be lost. God is the one who in Jesus Christ says, in my father's house, there are many dwelling places and I go before you to prepare a place for you so that where I am, you also may be. God, the one that I worship, is the one that leaves the 99 righteous sheep that aren't lost behind and goes after the one that is lost. The God that I worship is the one that searches the whole house for the one lost coin and does not rest until that coin is found. The God that I worship is the one who waits for the prodigal son that goes off and squanders his inheritance on prostitutes and on loose living 
wedding and then throws a party when that son is found and comes back. That is the God that I worship and that is the God that I am inviting you to worship today and adore any other God to hell with him. We don't want any other God. We want the God who is love. The God who is mercy, the God who is patience, who is kind, the God who says to us that even if a mother can forget her own child, I will never forget you. That is the God that the church today presents to us in these beautiful readings, that Jesus died for everybody, including those who during the time of Noah seemingly perished. They didn't perish. And neither will your husband who is lost. Neither will your child that is lost, your brother or sister, your friend. God is after them. God is searching for them. In the Bible, we see that all the time. Abraham, Moses, the prophets, everybody in the Bible. Mary, did Mary go after God? No, God went after her as God is after your loved ones, your children, God is after them and God will not rest until he finds them. Did God go after Joseph and Paul and the apostles or did they go after God? Jesus went after them. The Bible makes it clear. It is I who have found you, not you who have found me. It's God who finds us. That is the God we glory in today and we profess. In the creed, the Apostles' Creed, we, 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 we pray every time that Jesus, after the resurrection, descended into hell. Whatever hell we find ourselves in, God goes down there with us. You see, why is it that we have such a problem to believe in this type of a God? Because we want a God who is angry, who punishes us, because that's how we are. We are bad to each other. We hurt each other. Hell in this life is a result of what people do to each other. Who created the crematorias and the concentration camps? People did. We do that to one another. We create hell for each other. And therefore, we want to believe in a God who would create hell. God didn't. And God doesn't. And God doesn't rest until every single one of his children gets into heaven you know, I will never forget reading one of the Jewish midrashes. They are Jewish commentaries by ancient rabbis on biblical texts. In fact, they were studied and taught to be on par with scripture during the time of Jesus. And in the Talmud, which is the Jewish book, it's a compilation of uh, ancient Jewish stories by ancient Jewish rabbis of different explanations of different biblical stories. We read the story about the people of Israel, the people of God, the Jewish people, escaping and being taken out of Egypt, taken out of their slavery. And while the Egyptians drowned in the Red Sea, you remember Moses parted the Red Sea and the Israelites went through on dry land and then the sea came in and drowned the Egyptians. And this ancient Jewish story says that God and the angels are looking down on everyone from God's throne in heaven. So God is seated on his throne in heaven. The angels are dancing and rejoicing and God is sitting on his throne and God is not happy at all. God is sad and God is crying. In fact, the Hebrew word there used for crying says that God was weeping. God is consumed by great sorrow and one of the angels asks God, why are you crying? Your children are at last set free. We have had this great triumph. Your children are on, the, on their way to the promised land. Why are you not happy, God? The angels asked him. And God raised his head and said, Yes, my children were freed from slavery. But my children also drowned in the Red Sea. Just hits me right now. Yes, my children were freed from slavery, but my children also drowned in the Red Sea. How can I be happy, says God, 
while my children are lost. God is not happy until your child will be found. And God will not rest until he is found or she is found. God won't ever rest until all his children are with him. God doesn't just think of a certain group of his people, like the eight on the ark. No. God thought of all the people that drowned as well and had them in a waiting room. That's why this belief in purgatory for us as Catholics is so wonderful. It should fill us with great hope that there is always a chance. Always, even after we die. Oh, I love it. God weeps for all his children. All. Even the ones that drowned in the Red Sea, who were persecutors, who were slave masters. God weeps for the Taliban. God weeps for ISIS, for all those people. God hurts that they are away from him. God weeps for all his children. God even goes to shawl for us. Do you understand that? It's hard because we want to, you know, we want all the Taliban and all the ISIS people and, you know, and all of our enemies and all the people who've hurt us, we want to send them all to hell. Of course. And that's why we think God sends people to hell. But we believe in a God who would even die. Oh my God. I just, it hits me every time, you know. We believe in a God who would even die to make sure that we live. Remember, Jesus had to die to resurrect and then go to hell for the people who were there. You get how loving our God is? How good our God is? After many, many thousands of years, the people who were seemingly lost were in prison during the time of Noah. God went down to that prison for them after thousands of years, even if it takes them thousands of years. God comes for us. God never gives up on any, anyone, anyone. You get it? You know, I will never forget reading the story of uh, Teresa of Avila, St. Teresa of Avila, who is one of the women doctors of the church. If in fact, the Pope carries her writings in his briefcase. He's got like a few things in there, but one of the few writings that he always carries everywhere he goes is the writings of St. Teresa of Avila. And Teresa of Avila had her brother commit suicide. And she had these visions of Jesus. Jesus would talk to her. She was a mystic. And she asked him because, you know, the one thing that consumed her that she was worried about was, where is my brother who committed suicide? Where is he? Did he go to hell? Is he lost forever? And she asks Jesus, she says, Jesus, what happened to my brother? What happened to him? When he committed suicide and her brother drowned himself, in a river jumping off of a bridge and drowned in the river when he jumped from the bridge. And Jesus said to Teresa, Teresa, between the bridge where your brother jumped off of and the water where he drowned, between there, between the bridge and the water, was my mercy. My mercy was between the bridge and the water. That is the heart of God. Nobody is lost in the sight of God. Nobody. Nobody. So I invite you today to believe in that God, to embrace that God who is out there searching for you and searching for your loved ones. And he won't rest until you and they are found. God bless you.